but actually it's uh, the most popular business application in the world and uh, you know the business application is like uh, an application which is storing all your uh, company data so it's like HR data, the business data, financial data. So if, if somebody, some malicious attacker want to get access to all your company data, he should he can find it in the SAP. He don't need to hack the domain controller on the whole Windows machines. So all the data is stored in the SAP. So we probably we should pay more attention to the security of applications which store the the data. So in this talk, I will be speaking about um, some SP security history and some interesting things uh, from our uh, scan. So we scan the internet for the SAP systems and also the top 10 most interesting vulnerabilities in SAP. So in SAP security, we have three different areas and we will start about maybe 10 years ago when the Sunbinds Oxley standard was developed. So, and everybody will start to pay attention on the segregation of duties problem. And segregation of duties is like when uh, one user can make two actions, like create payment order and approve payment order. So it's not good and this, there is a matrix of the different duties. And uh, so for many years, the SAP security and segregation of duties was was a synonymous. Okay. Um, okay. Um, but later on, the people found that there is another problem. It's the ABAP code security. So ABAP is a pro, uh, program language in which the many functions uh, of the SAP are written. So, and okay. So, <laughs> so every company is writing your their own code in ABAP language to make some changes in the in SAP application. It's like a big framework. So, and this code can can store all the different vulnerabilities uh, as as C or in Java code. So. And the developers uh, can have uh, can make uh, vulnerabilities and uh, by the mistakes, and also they can make uh, backdoors and etc. So this is a, 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 the area of the SAP security too. And another problem is the application platform uh, security. Maybe we make something. <laughs> Okay, and another area is application platform security uh, because for these two areas you should have some kind of access to the SAP to uh, make the, uh, some kind of malicious actions. But if uh, some problem is here, for uh, for example the buffer overflow in the in the, in this uh, SAP service, so you don't need to have any uh, user account to exploit this. And unfortunately this area was not well covered, but now it's becoming more and more popular. And there is a list of the security uh, talks in the different conferences uh, about the SAP security. So this is really, really growing and this, this year will be approximately 30 different talks about the SAP security. So it's not very famous topic like SCADA or cloud, but it became popular. And one interesting thing is uh, the number of the SAP security nodes. So every every time that when SAP patches the vulnerability, they publish the security node, which is closing the vulnerability. So by now, uh, 2,300 2, vulnerabilities in SAP uh, was found and successfully patched. So I think it's really much. <laughs> and and you see the graph, like uh, it was a small number and during the latest three years the number was 
it's growing. And what kind of vulnerabilities we have? So the different ones, uh, like popular ones like directory also like cross site scripting and etc. So there are so many cross site scripting vulnerabilities in the SAP. And when we um, when the new guys come to our company, so and first first thing that they are doing to teach, we, we say like. We have an SAP try to find some exercise vulnerabilities. So, <laughs> and, but there are some vulnerabilities uh, that are not so popular, and uh, it's like uh, some kind of interesting things, and, and about what I will be talking in in the next slides. Uh, so another one thing is. Uh, the list of the uh, top, top implementation problems, uh, which can be uh, which can be found during the SAP uh, implementation. So the first of all, of course, is uh, lack of the batch management and uh, the default passwords and etc. Uh, and here is the list of the top problems made by other. Uh, Consortium for BZEC. So it's a list of the most popular uh, problems in the SAP platform. Uh, what we do, we just wanted to uh, find some new uh, interesting ways to hack the SAP. And of course, uh, all, all of these vulnerabilities, all the technical issues can uh, lead to the uh, like business, business risks like espionage, sabotage and fraud. So if you have access to the SAP system, you can steal the financial information, the HR data, etc. And if you have access, so some uh, ERP systems are sometimes connected to the, with, the, with the scatter systems because you need to collect the information and somehow to. So, and there are some trusted connections between the ERP systems and the scatter systems. So if you have access to the uh, ERP system, you can use the links and attack the scatter system. So it can be make a denial of service attack, etc. So and there is one myth that like the ERP systems are they are only internal based, so you cannot hack this uh, because it's not on the internet. It's in the secure network. This is this is false actually because uh, what we have to do we we make a big research in the area of how many systems are exposed to the internet and we have a survey published uh, a few months one month ago called SAP security in figures. So it's a big survey you can read it and. Uh, uh, we collected a lot of information about how many systems, uh, how many SAP services in which country are exposed to the internet, how many of them have vulnerabilities, how many of them, uh, what kind of versions, and etc. etc. So many, many, many interesting information. And so about the web services, it's very easy to find them. You can use uh, Google search strings like in IG portal. And using this string, you can find the uh, SAP portal systems. So, for example, SAP portal from the Tata Motors and etc. Uh, so, if you use uh, Shodan, it can be found the 19 uh, SAP web services in Portugal. It's not very much, but um, and again, okay, but. Of course, the web services must be accessed from the web internet because it's a it's a portal server. But the problem is that not only the uh, web services are exposed, but also different uh, CP services like dispatch or message server and etc. They also exposed to the internet. So by our results, there are about 194 uh, different services. Uh, which are exposed to the internet, but should not be. So, what about the message server? For example, 
And about a week ago, the ZDI was published uh, buffer flow, details of the buffer flow vulnerability in the message server. And it is very easy to exploit this vulnerability. And it can lead to code execution. So it's like when you have the message server exposed to the internet, uh, it can be potentially a big problem. And it's the data uh, about the, the other services. It's like uh, this is the medium, it's like world uh, statistics, and this is uh, in the Portugal statistics. So I have collected this information. And you have more dispatcher services uh, exposed. I don't know why. And uh, so there is a percent of companies who use SAP and expose a service to the internet. So it's like uh, every fourth company exposed the dispatcher service. And, and it's the same for other services. Okay, so enough for the business related information. So we can speak more about the technical stuff and the vulnerabilities. So here are the list of the most I mean, valuable and interesting inform uh, vulnerabilities in SAP. And let's start. So the GUI scripting denial of service. So in SAP there is a functionality to run the uh, to make it to run the commands using the script. So you can make a script which will automatically do some business related things. And so uh, every user can uh, can run the script if the server allow it. But if you run the script, there will be a message like uh, warning: somebody is running the script. And but this message can be uh, easily bypassed by the turning off the value in the registry because this value in the user uh, registry. It's not the system registry. So in this. In, so you can create a script which will disable the message and, and automatically run the, any, any script. And so the thing is, uh, using the script, it's, can, it's possible to make different attacks. But uh, what is uh, the, the, the most funniest one is uh, sending the messages. Because every, uh, almost every user has access to, the, uh, to this transaction. So, in SAP, uh, all the actions are uh, making due uh, by the transactions, and so the thing is, uh, you can run the the script, uh, which will uh, send the messages to all the users every second or more. So, if you run the script, which will uh, send, for example, thousands of messages, so every user in the company will open the SAP and will be the message like hello you will close it and a message will again appear and say hello so it will be the funny but the, it will be the denial of service attack for all the company so business will be stopped by such a simple uh, method and here's this this script it's very easy to to make this script uh, and what about how can how can we upload the script to user? There are many different options, like uh, using the ActiveX vulnerabilities in the in the SAP GUI application. We can use the cross-site scripting vulnerabilities <laughs> and etc. Of course, you, you can use the Teensy USB flash. It's very it's very easy. You can upload this script on the Teensy USB. You can go to the uh, so for, for the Teensy USB, it's a very uh, cool attack for against the chief financial officer. So using the same uh, scripting, it's possible, for example, to uh, change banking account in the SAP system and to change one banking account to your banking account. So all the money will be uh, going to your banking account. And these things is all, uh, are, that are possible uh, using the scripting. So we can upload this uh, script in the Teensy USB find the laptop or the chief financial officer who can do these actions, just turn it on and, <laughs> and all the money will go to you. So there is a 
high risk of sabotage in the when using the general service attack, and it's not very hard to exploit it. And this list of prevention just the SCP ask does for the every vulnerability include the prevention, but I don't think you want to read this. It's not very <laughs> interesting. <laughs> okay, so next is the XML blow up denial of service. So the XML problems are very popular now. And the, what is the interesting in, uh, in this attack? Because there is a web service for uh, called WebRFC, and you can run the RFC functions uh, using the web service. And by default, every user can run the function called RFC ping. So every user in the in SAP system. And the thing is that uh, if you send this kind of packet with the RFC ping function with many uh, attributes, it will be the denial of service attack to the uh, to the application. So you, you, you just need to have a, a user account or use a default passwords, and etc. It's also very critical to sabotage. And again, so... It's better to show on the screenshot. So, uh, in SAP, uh, you can... There is a one transaction called uh, BAPI. I don't know what's what is most of this transaction anyway. So you can I insert the JavaScript code in the name of the project. But uh, it, it's interesting because it's a GUI application. It's not a browser application, but it stores uh, some data in the HTTP, and uh, it's possible to inject the uh, JavaScript. But uh, it's not a normal XSS, so there is no session, so you can steal uh, the session. But what you can do, you can make an SMB relay attack, if you know what is this. So, uh, you make the, you insert the script like image src to the uh, SMB server, which you, are, which you own, and uh, next time we'll, when user will log in and open this transaction, uh, his wor wor workstation, which is usually a Windows machine, will try to load the file from, the, from your uh, SMB server. So user credentials, uh, hashed credentials will, will be transferred to <coughs> your, your server. And, and also you can uh, make an SMB relay, so you can get access to the user workstation. Okay. So it's a high risk of anything. So because you can get access to the user workstation and then you can do anything related. And uh, next is the encryption problem in the SAP uh, GUI application. So SAP GUI it's a client application for connecting to the uh, SAP server, and it's possible to store the password in the special file, like shortcut file. So many many users store the password in this shortcut file, but SAP uh, disabled uh, this option by default. But if you want, you but if many uh, like business people, they don't want to. Any any day enter the password. So, if if they wanted to use these shortcuts, they use it. And the password uh, is encrypted in this uh, shortcut. But the problem is, it's it's not encryption. It's just XOR. And the, another problem is the key key of the XOR algorithm is uh, the same for every installation. And uh, so it's not encryption, and it can be decrypted in less than a second. So the keys, this one, and if you, so we, we write a simple decryptor, and if you, 
<laughs> okay, so encrypted password, key, and decrypted password. It's very easy. And okay. The only one option to be secure is disable password storage in GUI because SAP uh, say that they will not patch it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And next is the uh, server side request forgery. So there is a um, web page, this one, um, installed by default in the SAP web, uh, in the Java web server. It is, can be accessed uh, without any authentication and have some nasty parameters like server and port. So using this script, we can uh, scan internal network which ports are open and which IP addresses are working or not. And it's very easy because if the host is not alive, we see the connection timeout. If the port closed, we see connection refused. And if port open, we can see other information. So from the internet, we can scan internal network of the company. So it's not very critical vulnerability, but it's just an interesting way to. I don't know what will be the next slide. So. OK. So you should disable uh, default application, because in the SAP, in the latest version of the SAP, Java, that we were Java engine, there are about 1,200 uh, web services enabled by default. It's <laughs> so much, so when every service is like a mini website, it can have tons of vulnerabilities and such. Uh, next. So, MMC session ID uh, stealing. So, uh, there is a service called um, uh, MMC, uh, so it's for the remote management of the SAP system, and there were found some uh, vulnerabilities by the quiz really. So it's information disclosed vulnerabilities in the service, because everybody without having any uh, username or password can connect to the server and download information about uh, logs, traces, and system parameters, and etc. It's not very critical information. Uh, was before we found some critical information. So during one of the assessments of the uh, SAP portal application, we were just reading the logs, and in one of the log files we found the J session ID, and this J session ID can be. Uh, inserted in the browser and we can be authenticated as a user which is which was connected uh, to the to the SAP portal. So without any authentication we uh, get the J session ID and uh, use it in the browser and connect as within the uh, the user. But unfortunately it's working only when the trace option is on. But it was found in the production system, so it means that some people use this trace option in production systems and it is not good. And it's not good too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's an example of an XML request to obtain the information from logs and this is a file name uh, where you can find the uh, JSON IDs. And I think this very high critical bug. So the only one way to be secure is don't use this trace option. Uh, next is so this is a uh, remote code execution vulnerability. Uh, okay. So there are many uh, RFC functions in uh, SAP, and some of them have uh, vulnerabilities like code execution. Um, 
Uh, there was one vulnerability found by our uh, one guy, Joris, and this was found in the THGRA function. It was successfully patched by SAP, but when I asked my colleague to write an exploit for this function, he opened the code and found interesting thing, like uh, this was patched in Linux, but not in Windows, <laughs> because they sent information like we found a vulnerability in Linux, and they patched it in Linux. <laughs> so we found it in, Linux, in, in Windows, it's possible to uh, insert the code. And probably I have a demo of this. It's, it's, very, it's very nice. So there is the SAP interface and you log in and run the transaction which can be used for come on. So you run the transaction, then you call the vulnerable RFC service and then some problems. So you insert the operation system command here and it will be executed and so you can run IP config and uh, etc. You can add the new user, you can read the files and anything you want. But in SAP there are many uh, possibilities to make uh, different actions. Uh, so for example, there are at least four ways to uh, execute this uh, RFC function. You can execute it by the remote RFC calls, using the SOAP RFC calls. You can log in to the SAP application and run the transaction. And also there is one interesting option to run the transaction, uh, 751. And Um, why it is interesting? Because um, there is there are some uh, default usernames and password in a uh, SAP application. So, for example, there is user early watch in the default client, and we log in using this. Oh no, no, not now. <laughs> no. So we log in using this user and we try to run the transaction SE73 but there's, you're not authorized to use this transaction. So by, you, you can't exploit it by the transaction SE37 but you can, you can, with this user, you can run the SM59 transaction and run the grab command and this grab command is calling uh, this method called th grab so if we just try to find something using the grab like we're trying to find ip config <laughs> and and we see IP config. Okay. So, so you can install the patches and etc. But be careful because there are many other RFC functions that are vulnerable too. So it's better to check ABAP code of. SAP transactions and also your transactions for the similar vulnerabilities. And another one, it's very interesting uh, bug, uh, was, which was presented by Andreas Weinstein in the Black Hat. So in uh, SAP, uh, most of the functionality written in ABAP, but there is a kernel functionality 
for example, for running the system commands and etc. It calls SAP kernel, and it's uh, there are about 300 different kernel methods, and it's written in C. So this guy found the vulnerability, a buffer overflow in one of the methods, but the problem is you you can't uh, call this method directly. You should uh, write the function in ABAP which will call this method. But the other thing that the guy found that there is a one function method. This uh, no. <laughs> so there is a one function method uh, which is calling the vulnerable kernel method. And so for ex for exploit this vulnerability, you should uh, input the big name parameter in the this program, and this program will call the kernel method, and the buffer flow will appear. So it's just an uh, interesting uh, way. And another interesting thing that uh, what we found uh, when we tried to make an exploit for all this, uh, it's not so, so this field is limited by the 100 characters. It's not easy to in input any uh, any shell code. And what we found is when we try to exploit it using the web RFC, uh, we can send the XML packets. And the name parameter is limited, but uh, the interesting thing in the SAP, we're still uh, reversing this area. That's why it's not included. So the thing is, uh, all the data in, in XML parameters is uh, when you send this to server, it's stored in the RVX memory. So you can upload the e hunter in this uh, small uh, uh, name, and uh, in other parameter you can upload any, any kind of shell code. So using the uh, XML uh, in SAP, you you can exploit other vulnerabilities too. So you can send uh, some kind of shell code using the just simple XML request, and then you can exploit vulnerability even if it's limited to any number of characters. You just need to upload the encounter. So you, you do it on, on, on a single request. So you send an XML packet with the, yeah. the Gunter shell code and then the, like, the string to find the... Yeah, so one, one packet with, uh, with two everything. parameters. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. And uh, another one thing, uh, in workers roulette. So this is the functionality for the developers to uh, rapidly call roulette by the class name. And it was published by uh, the SAP in their security recommendations. And what is the problem? From this, here's a web XML uh, file where you can uh, disable uh, or enable access to the different uh, services. So here you, you can see that uh, something going wrong. <laughs> Okay, so uh, for the admin di directory, uh, the only uh, users with role admin can have access. And, but also, there is a servlet uh, with this name, and you can call this servlet, but uh, so the servlet is uh, actually here, but this is the direct link to the uh, to the class name. So if we call this one, so, uh, we will run a servlet. And the problem is that uh, it is limited to the, so, so the service is limited, but if we uh, call directly using servlet, it's not limited, so everybody can call this. And it's better to 
show this on, on a video. So there are many uh, examples of the applications uh, which can be uh, hacked using this way. So here we're trying to connect and uh, or to open the application, but uh, we cannot because uh, for login you need we need to have a username or a password. Uh, so we call call this select directly. Here you can see the, I don't know what is the purpose of this service, but we see show file. Okay, show file is cool. So we put here something like, ah, so we see that file doesn't exist. So it's very nice and we can find something else like secret txt. And we successfully read this because I put this file on the system before but anyway you can read any information and the more uh, interesting thing like uh, many people who are uh, uh, working with the SAP uh, they see things like uh, all the data which is stored in the database in, uh, in SAP database it's very hard to uh, so it's, it's very hard to understand what kind of data, where is it it's stored and uh, if, you, if somebody can uh, have access to the uh, database file it's, it's uh, hard to find something but what I will show, it, it's not very hard it's, it's so easy and it's also possible uh, from the internet so what we do is oh. So we open the we open the database file directly, which stores uh, all the SAP data. It's uh, in this example is in Oracle database, and we open this file. And what we do, we just type the USD. We wanted to find some financial information. So when we found some. Probably it's uh, clients or etc. or it's a salary or but it is something nasty. So just from the internet uh, by using the one request we, we can directly open the um, the database with different financial information and etc. Okay, so I think this very critical bug and it's very easy to exploit, everybody can do it. And the most interesting, I think, is the work tampering vulnerability. It was presented in the uh, last Black Hat by me. And now I will show you. So again, it's a WebXML file, but the thing is, uh, there is a directory, admin, and I promise to not say fuck, so. Malicious, <laughs> man. <laughs> okay. So, there is a get method in the admin uh, folder, and there is, it's like a only admin uh, can make get uh, methods in this folder. But what if we, we use the head instead of get? It means that everybody can use head because it's it's not listed. Uh, so the thing is, if we delete this, it will mean that every method for... Uh, so every method is limited only by admin. But if we not... Uh, but if, if we uh, use the, the word get, it means that Get is limited, but head, post, and etc. is not limited, so everybody can use it. Uh, and the problem was to find uh, 
So, in about 40 of uh, applications installed by default was vulnerable, and for us it was the problem to find some application which do something critical to and to exploit it using the head request. And we found a very nasty application it's called CTC, it's interface for remotely managing the Java engine. And using this interface possible to add users, to uh, add user to group, to run operation system command and etc. And all this was possible using the head request. So you don't need to get information uh, if it's working or, or not, you just send a head request, create user, another head request, assign user to administrator role, and another request and change back an account, and etc. So it, all, all the things uh, uh, can be possible remotely uh, without any authentication and uh, so SAP portal, for example, which there are many SAP portals in the internet, and they based on the Java engine. So, uh, uh, by the our latest scan, it's about 50, 59 percent of uh, externally exposed portals have this service. I don't know how many of uh, them are vulnerable, but this is this default service is in the half probably in half of uh, portals is enabled. Um, and another interesting thing that if uh, it's patched, we can uh, bypass this by invokers led. So this CTC service, uh, the CTC service, we also can call it them by invoker by the previous one vulnerability. So you, you should be careful and patch both both vulnerabilities to be secure. And this is very very easy to exploit and it's very critical. Okay, so what can I say is I know there are many guides uh, for, for the SCP security and should focus on not only the business logic, like one user don't make two different things. So integration of duties is now the, the it's not the only uh, area in the SP security. And what else I have? Yeah, and I want to say thank you. And there will be uh, a small announcement that will be one Another one presentation for from me in the Black Hat, and will be some. Uh, I will present some ways to bypass all, many of the SCP security restrictions, and how to attack the internal network uh, using the server-side request forgeries, and etc. So it will be very interesting, very interesting talk. Okay, so thank you. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Any, any questions? <laughs> <laughs> is it, is it uh, a special uh, random blue screen program to use? I <laughs> know, <laughs> 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 you do it especially. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> Especially just to say fuck. <laughs> oh, I promise. Okay. So thank you and thanks uh, for the organizers. Yeah.